Can I, I'll be honest, and some of you guys know this about me already, I love Marvel movies. I do. I love all, I love all the superhero with DC, Marvel, doesn't matter. I just love, I've, since I was a kid, I had Superman sheets in wallpaper. Uh, I did, and, and I wanted to be. I actually wanted to be a superhero so bad, and, and um, I'll be vulnerable right now with you guys for a moment. Kind of thought I could fly for one moment, just a little bit. But then I hit the ground, you know what I mean? I, I went up to my roof. I mean, guys, come on now. You guys know you did this. You're like, maybe it's inside of me too. Maybe I'm from Krypton, you know? I didn't know. And you go up there on the roof, and you, you jump off, and you're like, yes, no. And so, but we did this over and over and over again. We got to the point where we're running, taking a running start. Maybe that's going to help. And we jump off the roof. My brothers, crazy. We were crazy kids. But we wanted to be heroes so bad. It, so when, you, when I see movies like this, it just awakens something inside of me. It awakens this wonder, this, this desire, this like supernatural power. Like this, the, the key guy in the movie, um, Chris Platt, his character name is Peter Quill or Star-Lord. He uh, discovers at the end of part one, he discovers that there's some power living inside him. Like there's a light, a literal light living inside of him that empowers him because he finds out that his estranged dad he's never met before, but his dad is like a God-type character. And so he, he discovered he's not an ordinary guy. He's, he's got power. He's got this light living inside of him. And, and man, it just when I, when I see this movie, I'm thinking like it reminds me of what I felt like. Because I wasn't raised in church at all. I was an irreligious heathen boy. All of us were. I, was, I had six brothers and one sister, and we didn't know nothing about, maybe a little bit, you know, we, would, we, we visited our, our you know, uh, cousins and stuff, and then we got a little bit. But in our household, definitely not. Definitely not. So, so when I came to Christ, and I started actually reading the Bible, and the miracles that God did, and, and, and the plans that he has for us, and how he's created us, and just all the things that are there, and I'm thinking like, that's my God? That's my daddy? That's my father? Wow, he put, he put that inside of me? Like, he put, what? Are you kidding me? I, I do have superpowers. Thank you, God. And, and it was just, I'm telling you, I read it from a different perspective. I was just like, man, my daddy's awesome. My daddy, I don't know about your daddy, but my daddy is awesome. Hey, by all the fathers, come on, happy Father's Day in the house. Give it up for the dads. So what, what this whole Guardians of the Galaxy is all about, the, the, the big idea really is, is let me kind of set it up. Uh, there's all these different characters that you're just introduced to. Um, all of them are misfits. You know? They all got issues. They're all messed up in their own weird way. They all have issues. They're all broken. They all come from brokenness. Uh, they all have like, like issues. And, and that's kind of what makes their characters endearing, I think. It's just like, yeah, they're jacked up. you know, And, and, and somehow they still pull it together. And somehow they work it out. And, and they find the way, and, and even through all the mess and the muck of their past and their issues, but every one of them does. Everyone has their own personal issues and their hang-ups, and, and they come from just brokenness. Like, a lot of them had their parents killed or their family killed, and so what that produced inside of them individually is this lifestyle of recklessness. They're taking whatever they want, doing whatever they want, um, have whatever they have. They just, they just didn't care. They didn't care if they're hurting, hurting whoever they... Could hurt. It didn't matter because they just didn't know, you know, they were lost. They didn't know who they were, what they were living for, but then they kind of find each other, and then they, they kind of do discover their, their purpose in life, and that is to be these guardians, these protectors, if you will, of the galaxy, and they discover this together, like, like they kind of find each other and discover, like, man, we're, together we can make a difference. Together we're something. Maybe we're made for this, and they become this team, the guardians of the galaxy. So the big idea of, of today's message and looking at the guardians of the galaxy is you need to know who you are, who you are and whose you are, or else you're going to end up hurting yourself and others. You, you'll end up living a reckless life, take, 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 whatever. What, it, what, is it, what does it matter kind of life unless you know who you are and you have a purpose for living. Let me read you a very popular proverb. You're familiar with a lot of you are familiar with this proverb, 29 verse 18. In your notes or up here on the screen, it says, where there is no, say that word out loud, where there is no vision, the people die. They take what they want, hurt whoever they're going to hurt, they, whatever they want. They, when there's no vision in your life, you'll perish. 
There are some of you in here today that you've even said that phrase, like, I just feel like dying. I just feel like giving up. Some of you even had that thought or maybe even said it like, what's the use then? What's the use then? What's the meaning of all this? Oh, gosh, what's the, why, why work? Why tarry? Why, why? I have no purpose, no sense of destiny, no dream. And you're kind of living in survival mode. The NIV says the same verse this way. It says, where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraint. If I don't know why I'm on this planet, then nothing matters. It doesn't matter if I go to church or not. It doesn't matter if I go to work or not. It doesn't matter if I'm nice to people or not. I might as well just be happy and do whatever I can to be happy and get whatever is mine. It just doesn't matter anyway, whatever. And I looked up this word in the Hebrew, which is what your Old Testament is written in. That proverb was written in Hebrew. I looked up that word vision or revelation that's used right there. Here's what that word is in the Hebrew. It's calzone. Not in your notes, but up here if you want to write it down. Cal- not calzone. Don't get hungry on me, okay? <laughs> like, that sounds good right now, Pastor. No, no, no. Ka- calzone, like a cow. Calzone. And it's, it's a Hebrew word meaning a dream, a revelation, or a vision. A dream. I I have a dream. I have a revelation about what my life is about. I know my calling in life. I have a vision for my life. And so here's the question I want to ask you today. Do you have a vision, a dream, a revelation? Do you know your purpose? Do you know why you're on this planet. This is so important because once you can define this, it gives purpose to everything else in your life. But without this clearly defined, nothing else will make sense. It might make sense for a time, but it won't make sense for long enough. You'll come to the end of it for a season. Do you know what your dream is, what your vision is? Have you, do you have a purpose for your life? I mean, I know why I breathe air, you know? Once you have that, it's like, it's like I know why I'm here now. I know why I'm, I'm paying bills and raising kids, and I know why I exist. I know it. I have a dream. I'm called by God. I know it. And so what I want to do today is to, is to help you find your purpose. And I'm not naive, and I don't want you to be naive either. I don't, I don't think that 30 minutes with you today is going to help un, under, uncover like the full revelation of, of God's dream and purpose for your life. But what I hope to do today with the help of the Holy Spirit, and this is, and I do believe God wants, God wants to give revelation today is what I believe. God wants to point you in the right direction. And so I, what I'd like to do today is just help get you pointed and going in the direction of God's dream and purpose for your life. I, and, and I believe that God wants to do that. Now listen, God's dream, his purpose for your life, is, it's never easy. Okay? It's never easy, and it's never quick. It's not. It's not quick. It's not, it's not easy, all right? But you can, you can, with God's help, get going in the right direction. But before I do that, before we start going in that direction and I uncover some things with the help of God's Spirit today, is just to uncover some things today. Um, I, need to, I need to kind of bring some clarity to something that might not be very clear, like your purpose. Some of you in here today like, in a fog, like, I have no idea, you know, about what God, God has a purpose for my life, a dream. So let me bring some clarity to where, some, where this might be a little bit unclear right now. Let me give you a few points, things you need to know about your purpose before you start on the journey to discovering your purpose. There's some things you just need to know. Okay, write these down if you're taking notes. Here's the first thing you need to know about God's purpose for your life, and that is that my sins and mistakes don't change my purpose. My sins and mistakes don't change my purpose. Man, I am so glad for this one. God's call for my life, it doesn't matter how messed up your life has been, whether you messed it up or whether somebody else messed it up for you. It doesn't matter how screwy it got. It doesn't matter how difficult it became, no matter how many dumb decisions you've made in the past. It hasn't changed God's purpose for your life at all. At all. You need to know that. You need to know that that you don't just have available for you plan B or C. God's plan for you is still in effect. I love this about God. A good example is uh, Paul, the Apostle Paul. Paul, before he was an apostle, was a pretty rude dude in a crude mood. How many know what I'm talking about? All right, he was. He was a bad dude. Look at it. 1 Timothy chapter 1. Paul says this. By calling me into his service, 
Jesus has judged me trustworthy, even though I used to be a blasphemer and a persecutor and contemptuous. Mercy, however, was shown me because while I lacked faith, I acted in ignorance. I love that phrase, while I lacked faith, I acted in ignorance. That's like saying, I made a lot of dumb decisions when I was young. You know, I made a lot of, how many of you would say, I made a lot of dumb decisions when I was young. How many of you agree with that? Yeah, that's just apostleship and training. Congratulations. You're, you're, that's, what, that's all that is. You know, I, I just, I, Paul, was, Paul was a religious terrorist. That's what he was. He was a religious terrorist. Terrorists. He would, he would drag people out of their homes into the street to be beaten and thrown in jail and, and killed. Paul was a murderer. God said to Paul, that didn't change the purpose I had for you when I created you. Not one bit my purpose is, to, I'm going to fit that in. I can fit everything. I love that about God, that he never wastes anything. And he fits everything into his plan for our life, even our sins, even our my mistakes, even the stupid decisions I've made that I will regret the rest of my life, God says, I can put that into the plan as well. Because all things work for the good of those who love God and who are called according to his purpose. This is so beautiful that you need to know that your sins and your mistakes do not change God's purpose for your life at all. Not only do you need to know that, but you also need to know that the sins of other people against you don't change your calling at all. See, because some of you, maybe you may be in here today and you're a little bruised. You're a little beat up and battered from life, from what maybe someone has done to you or a life has done to you. Maybe you got chewed up a little bit. Maybe you got abused. Maybe you got Maybe you got raped or molested. Maybe, maybe there was something horrendous and awful that was done to you, and I am so sorry for that. But what you need to know is that that does not change your value at all, and it does not change God's purpose for your life, not one bit. God says, I can fit that into the plan. I can make that good if you let me. My sins and mistakes don't change God's purpose for my life. That's so important for you to understand. Here's the second thing that you need to know about your purpose. And that is that my purpose is connected to others. I really love it. I really love this about Guardians of the Galaxy is that had all these issues and they had all these mistakes in the past and stuff and still, man, they're able to be used so mightily in the world and making a difference. And, and, and they, they found it through the relationships that they were in. My calling, my assignment from God in life, my purpose, the vision, the dream God has for my life is connected to other people. What do I mean by that? You cannot fulfill your purpose in life by yourself. It's impossible. You, you, can't, you can't do it. You, you, can on, you can only do it connected to other people. Purpose and people go together. Your calling and community go together. It's inseparable. You cannot be what God wants you to be. You cannot fulfill the destiny God has on your life unless you are connected to the right people. That's why, that is why we're so big on groups here, and we talk about groups all the time. It's because, man, my whole, one of the biggest goals of, my, and one of my biggest jobs as your pastor is to help get you doing what God has called you to do. That's, that's like to discover that and to do that. And in order for you to do that, I know you need to be connected to some healthy relationships. Therefore, you need to get into a group because you will never fulfill the calling on your life. You'll never know the dream, the extent even of the dream, unless you're connected to other people. I love this next one about your purpose. Write this last one down, and that is that God empowers what he calls me to do. You, you can believe that. God will always empower you with whatever he's called you to do. He'll empower me. In other words, if God has given me an assignment in life, he's going to enable me to do it. He's going to equip me to do it. He's going to empower me to do it. He's going to strengthen me to do it. He's going to give me the ability and the resources to do it. God will never ask you to do anything in your life that he does not give you the power to fulfill. Never. Here's my prayer for you in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. It says, this is why we always pray for you, asking our God to help you. That's the empowerment, asking God to help you now. Live the kind of life you were called to live. God says, I called you to live this kind of life, and I'm going to help you with the power. 
We pray that with this power, God will help you do the good things you want and perform the works that come from your faith. Notice, do the good things and perform the good works. The Bible says you were created to do good works far before you ever existed. That was the plan. That was the purpose. And God says, I will give you the power. You can count on God to give you the strength you need to fulfill the dream he has for your life. Okay, so how do we, how do, we do that then? How do we discover God's purpose, God's, the dream, the revelation that God has for our life? To help us today, I want to I dive into Ephesians, the book of Ephesians chapter 5. I don't want to pull some things out, but, but Ephesians is such a powerful book. It's packed with so Ephesians chapter 5, particularly about who you are in Christ. Um, I'm going to help, let this word of God help us, and then we're going to apply some things and expose some things in our life and help, with the help of God, get back on the right track, you guys, okay? Amen, everybody? Amen? All right, let me, go with me there. Ephesians chapter 5, starting at verse 8. It says, For you were once darkness... But now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of the light. In other words, you need, some, you need this light. You need some light. Light up your life. The fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Very interesting phrase right there. Don't you think that, that it's like God's plan is for you to like find out. It's for you to discover what pleases him. I want you to just grasp that. We're going to come back to it, but I want you to focus on that. Find out what pleases the Lord. And then conversely here, have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness. Now, all of us have some dark places. Every one of us in this room has some dark places. Some of us have some places they're like nobody else knows about, and that's why they're dark, because nobody else knows about. We're the only ones. And here's what you need to do. He says, expose them. They need to be exposed. For it is shameful even to mention what disobedient do in secret, but everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For it is the light that makes everything visible. This is why it is said, and here's my message to you today, wake up. Those of you who are sleeping, wake up. Those of you who are living life with no direction, those of us who are living life with no dream, no revelation, no vision from God, no purpose, wake up. Up and rise from the dead. And look what will happen. Look what happened. It says, and Christ will shine on you. And he says, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every keyword here, of every opportunity. See, God, on your, on your quest to discovering the vision for your life, God says, I'm going to give you some opportunities on the way. I'm going to open some doors. I'm going to give you opportunities on the way to find it because the days are evil. Therefore, don't be foolish. And he says it again, but understand what the Lord's will is. Like, discover that. Go on a journey. Discover that. It's a beautiful adventure. It's, a, it's, it's, it's part of the, the, the reason why you exist is to live out this journey of discovering and finding the will and purpose of God for your life. He says in... Don't get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery, which is, that's just, debauchery is a fancy word that just means the extreme indulgence of your senses. It's kind of just, you know, whatever kind of life, just whatever, whatever kind of life. I'm just going to do whatever pleases me. He says, don't do that, but instead be filled with the spirit, that, the breath of God that gives life to everything else. So how do we do that? I mean, he, he, he talked about quite a bit right here, but I've broken it down to four questions that I want to ask you today. And, and, and as I ask them, I, what I want is just you to answer these honestly and truthfully, and I believe if you do, if you, can, if you can answer these questions with me, then it'll put you on the track. It'll, it'll point you, start pointing in the direction of God's dream and purpose for your life. Does that sound good, you guys? Amen? Amen. Okay, here it is. Let me give you four questions that we need to answer today in order to find our purpose. Here's the first one. It's got to start here. Number one, have I made myself available to God? Have I made myself available to God? And that's a yes or no question, so maybe even after you answer it that way, here's another way you can ask this one is, how have I made myself available 
to God. How? How have I made myself available to God? This is where it has to, this is where it has to start because God is the one who holds the dream of your life. He is the one who holds the purpose. He's the one who crafted you and designed you. He's the one who created the good work before you ever existed and created you for it. So look, you don't, you don't find your purpose in your dream by looking into your heart or meditating or soul searching. That's not where you're going to find your purpose because you didn't create yourself. You find your purpose by making yourself available to God, by pursuing Him. That's how you, that's got to be step number one. Look at what it says in Ephesians chapter one. It's in Christ that we find out who we are and what we're living for, part of the overall purpose he is working out in everything and every one. How am I making myself available to God? Let me say it this way. Are you saying yes to God? Are you saying not now? Uh, not yet. No, I don't think so. What, are you cuz you're saying you're saying yes to something. Your life is getting full. Your time is getting spent, energy getting spent, money getting spent. You're, you're, you're investing in yourself. Your days are going by. So you're, you're saying yes to something. What I'm saying is if you want to discover the purpose and the dream, if you want that revelation, then you need to start saying yes to God. Saying yes to God, making yourself available to God. Look, and God, God does not need your ability. He needs your availability. Okay, I, I am where I am today and who I am today, not because of my ability, but because of my availability to God. I'm telling you with, with, with honesty, you guys, that, that where I am today in Christ and what he, whatever he has given me was not because I produce something or have some sort of skill or ability. It's because I came to God and said, here I am, Lord, use me. Yes, God. Yes, God. In this season, here comes another season. Yes, God. Yes, God. And look, that dream, I said, it'd never be, it's never easy. It's never quick. Look, it may start off. You may get all in the right direction today, and God will just give you like a little, those old Polaroid pictures. It's, it's a little fuzzy, but you can see part of it, and you say, wow, that's beautiful. That's amazing for the season that I'm in. Yes, God. Yes, God. But then you jump into another season, and you, when you say, yes, God, again, God opens up the Polaroid just a little bit more and says, yeah, check what else. Yes, God. Yes, God. And then you get into another season and you're saying, here I am, God, use me. And it's this beautiful adventure that never ends of God's revelation and vision being poured out into your life. It never ends. And it all starts with, yes, God. Yes, God. So what are you, what are you, what are you saying no to or not yet to that, that is preventing you from walking into the dream and the revelation of God? And only you can answer that. That's why these are questions for you. How am I making myself available to God? Yes, God. Yes, God. Let me give you a few things that prevent us from saying yes, a few things that prevent us from being available to God. Just some barriers. Let me give you three of them. Three barriers real quickly, and I'm going to give you the rest of the questions, okay? Three barriers that will prevent us the most common, I think, barriers that prevent us from, from being available to God. Here they are. Here's number one. Write this down. Number one is self-centeredness. Just a self-centered lifestyle. I'm too caught up in my own plans. I'm too, uh, my own dreams, my own ambitions, my own goals. I don't have time for God's plan for my life. I don't got time to help other people. I don't got time to serve somebody else or serve God. I mean, I, I'm too busy with my own agenda. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 2, verse 4, I love the message paraphrase of this. He says, forget yourself long enough to lend a helping hand. Man, I'm telling you, if you want to make yourself available for God, you need to forget yourself long enough to be used by God. The, the number one enemy of compassion is busyness. Just, just busy, busy. And after a message like this, I'm telling you, I guarantee you, God is going to give you an opportunity He's going to put a need in front of you, and, and, and he's, it's going to be a test. He's going to test you to see if you're going to say, yeah, God, yes, God, I'll, t I'll do that. Yeah, I'll meet that need, God. Yeah, I'll help that person, God. And it, it'll, be an opera, it'll be a test. I'm telling you, you look out for it. There's a test coming your way where God is going to present to you a need, a step. Will you make yourself available? 
Or will you stiff arm God again and keep the revelation, <clears throat> the vision that God has for you um, at bay? That's number one. That's number one barrier, self-centeredness. The second barrier is perfectionism. Perfectionism says, I'm going to wait until it's just perfect, and then, then I'll start serving God. Then I'll, then I'll get on that dream team. And, you know, one of these days, you know, when my kids grow up, then I'm really going to, you know, or when I get financially secure, that's when, 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 when things are going better. Or when I'm out of school, when I'm out of school, that's when I'm really going to, you know, someday get involved in ministry. I'll really get involved, you know, getting used by God. Listen, you guys, stop waiting for someday and use whatever you have, whatever you got for Jesus today. Just start making yourself available. There is no such thing as a perfect condition. Don't wait for the perfect time. Ecclesiastes 11 and 4 says, if you wait for perfect conditions, you'll never get anything done. It'll never, because there's no such thing as the perfect condition. There's no such thing. If you wait for life to get perfect, it's not going to ha get happen. You, you say, well, I'll, I'm just going to wait for things to slow down. It's a busy season. Guess what? It doesn't slow down. It's called life. Okay? It never slows down. So, so stop waiting to serve God in, in the ideal world of your imagination and get busy serving God in the real world where it's messy and busy and, and hectic and just start saying yes to God. I'm telling you. It, it, it'll make a big difference in your life. Perfectionism keeps us from being available. Here's the last one, and that's materialism. Materialism keeps us from fulfilling our purpose. We get so busy taking care of things that we don't have time to take care of people. Look what Jesus said. No servant can serve two masters. You cannot serve both God and Money. He didn't say you should not. He said you cannot. You cannot. You can't do both these things. It's impossible. If God wants to make you wealthy, great. He does that. I mean, he does. God's all, if God wants you, great. It just better not be the number one priority of your life. It better not. Because you know why? When you get to heaven, God's not going to go, how much is in your bank account? No, no. That's not what he's going to say. I'll tell you what he's going to say. It's called a two-question test. That's what I call it. I'm going to give you the test. When you get to heaven, you're going to be asked two questions. Do you, you, if you don't know them, you need to know them. I'm giving you the test. This is like the cheat sheet, okay? God, there's two questions. The first question he's going to ask, he's going to say something like this. What did you do with my son? That's the question of salvation. What did you do with Jesus? What did you do with my son? That question determines whether you get into heaven or not. That's it. You, you, what'd you do with him? There's a right answer and a wrong answer. The wrong answer is, I heard about him. I went to church a lot and heard about him. That's the wrong answer. The right answer is, I knew him personally. He's my friend. I, love, I loved him. He's my Lord. That's the right answer. That gets you into heaven. Then there's a second question that determines the rewards of what heaven is going to be like for you. And, and that question goes, it's going to go something like this. God's going to say, what'd you do with what I gave you? That's the question of stewardship, the question of salvation, and the question of stewardship. Because God, God, God's giving you gifts He's giving you time. He's giving you resources. He's giving you a dream and a purpose that he puts you on the planet, a good work that he planned for you to do. And he's going to say, what'd you do with it? What'd you do with it? These barriers, don't, don't let these barriers prevent you from realizing and walking in the dream God has for you. And listen, don't be afraid. God will never ask you to let go of anything unless he intends to replace it with something better. Can I get an amen? Okay. I'm telling you, God's plan for your life is better than the one you made up for yourself. It is. Trust him, it is. You can keep trying. I mean, but there's a lot of people that will tell you that where you're headed here. Some of you have already figured that out, and that's why you're here today, because you, you hit dead end number 10. And you're here going, man, is it ever going to work? No, not your way not your way. You got to make yourself available to God. That's step number one in, in finding your purpose. Make yourself available to God, all right? Here's the second question that you need to ask yourself, just pointing you in the right direction today, and that is, what am I doing that I should not be doing? <clears throat> what am I, that's a good question. What am I doing that I should not be doing? Now, all of us, I bet, if we're honest, we have stuff that we're doing that we know we shouldn't be doing. In fact, let me say it this way. There are those of us today that are living a life that we know that we weren't intended to live. 
Like, this, is, this isn't it. This, this, this isn't the plan. And some of you have given up and said, okay, sirrah, sirrah, that's just the, that's just the way it's going to be. No. No, that's not. You serve a God who, of, the, of the fresh start. You serve a God of the second chance. You serve, that's, it's time to expose those things, those deeds of darkness holding us back and say, I've had enough. Because listen, hiding behind the, those, those things that you know you shouldn't be doing, hiding behind that is the purpose of God for your life. Let me show it to you in scripture. You read this last week. For those of you that were here, let me, let me kind of pull out something different here. In Romans chapter 12, verse 2. It says, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world. Like, get that worldly junk. Get, 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 out, get out of that stuff. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then, and I left it blank like that on purpose. Then, because what happens if I get rid of these deeds of darkness that I know I, I, I shouldn't be doing? Then, you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. Hiding behind those deeds of darkness when I remove those things is the will of God for my life. It's his purpose. See, the enemy wants to keep that stuff in your life. He wants to keep the the dream and the, the revelation of God. He wants to keep that suffocated by the things you know you shouldn't be doing. Expose it. Bring it out of hiding and put it into the light. What am I doing that I shouldn't be doing? Here's the third question. What am I not doing that I should be doing? I told you these were going to be kind of exploratory today. What am I not doing that I should be doing? Another good question, because remember the Bible says, I'm going to give you some opportunities, God says. I'm going to, I'm going to give you some opportunities. So I'm going to give you some light. And honestly, I think... I think our job as leaders of the church is to, is to give you opportunities to put something meaningful and purposeful in your life. For some of you, you know what that means? It, it means it's time for you to just give your life to Jesus. For some of you, that's, that, it's time. It's like you've come to Sunday, you've checked out faith, and it's time to just go, okay, I, I, it, it's time. I'm, I'm, I'm all in. In fact, I'm going to read my Bible every day. I'm, I'm going to pray. It's different. It'll be different. This question will be answered different by different people, and it'll be different things, but it's time to do the things I know I'm supposed to be doing. And again, what you're going to find hiding behind that is your purpose, is God's destiny for your life. James, the book of James is kind of blunt, kind of brutal. I love James, man, the book of James. But he says this in chapter 4, verse 17. He says, anyone then who knows that good that they ought to do and doesn't do it, sins. You know what that means? That means you don't need me telling you what you're not doing. You already know what you're not doing. You don't even need me telling you what you should be doing. You already know that, all right? You don't need a holy Jason. You got a holy spirit, okay? And he's already, he's already showing things, and he has been. He's been already pointing things out and showing you things, and, and he's, he's revealing. He's going, isn't it time you let that go? Isn't it time you got rid of that from your life? And isn't it time that you finally stepped into this, my son? Isn't it time that you finally stepped into this, my daughter? What is he doing? Why is he, why is he, why is he pointing that stuff out? Because tucked under all that stuff is God's plan. It's his vision for your life. Matthew says it this way, Matthew 6, 34. It says, give your entire attention to what God is doing right now. Like, give yourself fully to it. Like, whatever it is, I, always, I like to encourage people to just say yes to God to the extent of, give me one year. Give me one year of your life and say yes to God. Like, do everything. Run the whole play. Go, go, go to the next steps. The next steps here at Discovery, they're for this purpose, to help you discover the purpose God has for your life. That's why we do the next steps here. So get on, go to the small groups. Go to the conferences. Get on a team. Like, just come to the prayer. Well, do the 21 days thing that's coming up soon, the prayer challenge. Just do, do it all. Do it all. I'm telling you, you will not be disappointed. You will not be disappointed disappointed. Give your entire attention to God and what he's doing right now, 
right now. And don't get worked up about what may or may not happen tomorrow. God will help you deal with whatever hard things come up when the time comes. Am I making myself available to God? What am I doing that I should not be doing? What am I, what am I not doing that I actually should be doing? You answer these questions. You allow the Holy Spirit to point out those areas. I'm telling you, you're going to be one quantum leap ahead towards God's dream and vision for your life. Here's how I want to close. Here's the last question that I have for you today. And that is, why not do it today? Why not do it today? Why, why, why wait? So like, don't, don't do it next season. Don't do it next week. I mean, don't wait. No, today. Hey, everybody, today, come on. How many procrastinators do I have in here? How many are procrastinators? You know you're a procrastinator. Yep. Some of the procrastinators are like, yeah, I'll raise my hand in a minute. <laughs> Today's the day. Why? I'm telling you, God's plan is better than your plan today. Why wait to start getting on the track of God's dream and vision for your life? Why wait? Do it today. Look what the Bible says. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2, up here on the screen. Check it out. It says, I tell you, now is the time. Now. Let me say it this way. God has never loved you more cared for you more, willing to give you a fresh start more. He's never been more excited about the plan he has for your life than right now. Today, now is the day of God's salvation. Why wait? Do it today. Come on, let's bow our heads all across this worship center.